my name is Paula Cordero. I am with the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry here at UNLV, and today I will be presenting a detailed comparison of palladium and platinum nanoparticle modified diamond electrodes for the detection of hydrogen peroxide. So, a little bit of background. What are reactive oxygen species? Reactive oxygen species, also known as ROS, are a type of unstable, highly reactive molecule that results from oxygen. The ROS include oxygen itself, the superoxide anion, peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, which is of particular interest for this project, the hydroxyl radical, and the hydroxyl ion. ROS are very important. They are naturally generated in metabolic pathways within the human body. However, they're usually detoxified by certain enzymes throughout these different pathways. When they're overproduced, though, the ROS can attack cells and it can lead to diseases including cancer, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, cell death, hypertension, and a lot of other diseases. Even though they're so important, they are hard to detect because they are short-lived and they are actually produced in small concentrations. So even though they're produced in these small concentrations, overproducing it just a little bit in the body can lead to catastrophic results. So why hydrogen peroxide in particular? Well, hydrogen peroxide tends to be produced in larger concentrations. It is also a precursor to other ROS, as you can see in this diagram. Hydrogen peroxide can become the hydroxyl radical, and it is also produced by other ROS, so the superoxide radical can produce hydrogen peroxide. It is produced in various pathways, and we actually know the mechanism of peroxide oxidation, as shown right here with these reaction schemes. So since we know these mechanisms of peroxide oxidation on platinum and palladium surfaces specifically, we can apply a potential or a voltage in order to induce the production of ROS and gain an electrochemical response. And by doing so, we can then detect the hydrogen peroxide in solution. What are boron-doped diamond? Boron-doped diamond electrodes are a carbon-based electrode. They are inert, they have a wide potential window, so we can apply a wide range of voltages. It is robust, it has a low capacitance or low background current. It has excellent chemical stability, so it's less prone to fouling in biological systems. However, it is not very sensitive for hydrogen peroxide. And in order to overcome that obstacle, we decided to modify the electrode with the platinum and palladium nanoparticles to make the boron-doped diamond electrode more sensitive to hydrogen peroxide. Now that we have a bit of background, we will move on to the methodology. So for our electrode preparations, we drop-coated the electrode with sodium boron hydride, which is a strong reducing agent in order to provide an anchor for the nanoparticle salt solutions. After we drop-coated the sodium boron hydride, we proceeded to drop-coat the electrode with the nanoparticle salt solution, and then we electrodeposited, so we applied a voltage for a certain amount of time in order to cause the nanoparticles to grow on the electrode surface. For our measurements, there were three parts to our measurements. For part one, we used phosphate buffer solution. For part two, we used a model one electron transfer reaction um, known as ferrocene, and for part three, we used hydrogen peroxide. For part one, we swept the potential or a voltage from zero volts to one volt. For part two, we held that potential at 0.1 volts and then stepped it to 0.8 volts in order to obtain a response. And for part three, we held the potential at 0.15 volts and then stepped it to 0.8 volts. Moving on to our results, so for part one, our background current results, we went ahead and swept the potential as previously stated in order to obtain the inherent background current of the electrode. So all electrodes have a associated background current to them, and since we're modifying these electrodes, we needed to obtain that background current in order to provide a baseline. So as you can see, 
on the palladium modified BDD electrodes, the capacitance or background current appears to be much smaller than that of the platinum modified boron dope diamond electrodes. And in particular, our 0.25 millimolar palladium modified BDD appears to have a small capacitance, although there also appears to be a little bit of resistance. And if we look at the platinum modified BDD, the 1 millimolar platinum modified BDD appears to have the largest capacitance of all the modified electrodes. For our ferrocene results, we did this study using the model 1 electron transfer system that ferrocene is known to have. And we did this in order to obtain the electroactive surface area of the electrode. So this surface area is the surface area that is actually participating in the peroxide oxidation. It is not necessarily going to be equal to the geometric surface area of the electrode. Looking at the palladium modified BDD, we see that the 0.25 millimolar palladium BDD appears to have the highest current response, so it is the most sensitive to the um, reaction that's occurring with ferrocene. And if we look at the platinum modified BDD, we see that our 0.25 and our 1 millimolar platinum BDDs appear to have equal responses to the ferrocene, which is interesting since with the palladium, we saw that the 0.25 millimolar modification had a more sensitive response, and we had expected the same for the platinum BDD, but it wasn't the case. So for the hydrogen peroxide results, we ran a calibration curve, so we actually detected a variety of hydrogen peroxide concentrations. What we show here is the 1 millimolar peroxide, and we did this to obtain limits of detection, limits of quantification, and the electrode sensitivity. So as we can see on the palladium modified BDDs, the 0.25 millimolar palladium BDD was once again the most sensitive. It gave the highest current response, so it was detecting the peroxide oxidation more than the 0.5 or 1 millimolar palladium BDDs. When we look at the platinum, we see that our 0.25 millimolar platinum was the most sensitive, followed by the 1 millimolar platinum BDD, which is interesting since in the ferrocene results, both the 0.25 and the 1 millimolar platinum were equally sensitive. So what we're seeing here is that even though they were equally sensitive with ferrocene, the 0.25 millimolar platinum is more sensitive to the peroxide. So I included the bare BDD results. You can see that the electrode surface area is 0.31 centimeters squared, and we have an inherent background current of about 6.7 microfarads per centimeter squared. However, there is no LOD, LOQ, or sensitivity, and this is because bare BDD does not have a response to the peroxide. It is not sensitive enough, so there were no values to obtain for those. Looking at our 0.25 millimolars palladium BDD, we see that its surface area is about 0.28 centimeters squared, and it has an inherent background current of about 15.7 microfarads per centimeter squared. Now looking at our 0.5 millimolars palladium BDD, we see that its surface area is about 0.37 centimeters squared, and its inherent background current is 11.7 microfarads per centimeter squared. So it has a higher electrode surface area and a lower background current than the 0.25 millimolars palladium BDD. However, its limits of detection, limits of quantification, and sensitivity are not as good as 0.25 millimolars palladium BDD. And we believe that this is because the lower concentrations of the nanoparticles are allowing for a more uniform and dense covering of the electrode surface, thus giving us better sensitivity. You can also see that our pl platinum BDDs gave higher inherent background currents, and it didn't have as good of an LOD, LOQ, or sensitivity. Now, the inherent background current is particularly important because we want to take this 
to the cellular level. So we want to miniaturize our electrodes and having a high inherent background current is going to cause too much of a background noise on our measurements and we won't be able to obtain any peroxide responses from the cells. So these are my references, and I would like to thank the National Institute of General Medical Sciences for the grant that we received. I would also like to thank INBRI and INBRI Europe and Dr. Swain and Dr. Walton for their discussions and guidance, and some undergraduates, Ms. Morales and Ms. Castillo, Thank you for your experimental assistance. Thank you to Dr. Rusnik, Rusnik Lab, the UNLV Graduate College, and the UNLV Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. So thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great symposium.